The following is a Rock Radio Show.com exclusive. Worship us! Welcome back to The Rack right here on WildTalkRadio.com. We're super excited because joining us right now is one of our favorite guests, Ring of Honor star and now member of the band, Vex Temper. Please welcome back to the show, Frankie Kazarian. I am doing outstanding. How are you doing today? I'm outstanding as well on this beautiful day. I hope it's nice where you are. Beautiful where I am. It's uh, probably about 68 degrees in sunny Southern California here. Oh, you can't be that. Can't uh, be that. Nope, nope. That's why I live here. That's why I will <laughs> never... The only way I'll leave the state is in a body bag or a coffin. So this is my home. Well, let's hope, let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so you have this exciting new venture, and I have to know... Tell me about the band Vex Temper. How did it get started? Um... Well, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily new, but though our music and our album is new to listeners, um, I've been in this band or this project for uh, probably close to five years, the better part of five years. And it started as, you know, me and four buddies just kind of jamming. When I, when I moved back home to Southern California in late 2011, got together with some buds and started jamming. And, um, you know, we had a lineup change over the course of that time. But, you know, we would we would write some original stuff and do some covers, but I you know, realized we started taking this kind of serious and had a collection of what we thought were really good songs and thought, you know what, let's make a demo. And then what turned into a demo turned into us uh, recording these seven tracks. And uh, the decision was made to try to, you know, get the album made and get it out there to the people. And I was lucky enough to have a very, very strong support system in my wrestling fan base, which is super cool. And uh, was able to kind of parlay that into getting Vex Temper out there. So we recorded the album from uh, about September to December of last year, mixed it the early part of this year, and have it had it mastered and uh, released it on April seventh. And um, am excited with the uh, response and the feedback that I've gotten from wrestling fans and from rock and metal fans, and uh, just continuing to push it to try to get people to listen to it. And uh, it's just a another really cool, exciting venture that I love doing as much as professional wrestling. I bet it sounds like it. And, and you know, did you and your buddies have any big musical influences growing up that kind of played into this? Yeah, I mean, we're all pretty much into the same type of music. We all, you know, we all, we're all about the same age. Some of the guys are a little bit older than me, but we're all heavily influenced by uh, thrash metal, like 80s thrash metal, basically, the big four, Metallica, Anthrax, Slayer, Megadeth, uh, certainly bands like Black Sabbath, Rolling Stones, um, Pantera, Motorhead, uh, metal and rock and roll, ACDC, uh, you know, even some uh, newer, newish bands like Soundgarden and, um, you know, definitely stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, we all come from the same place musically. We all are on the same page. Um, and um, and uh, it's kind of created what we kind of have been labeled as desert metal. Just kind of, you know, uh, kind of a throwback to that older school, straightforward rock and metal sound. It seems like that's been coming back lately or it feels like it's coming back lately i don't know at least in music because it felt like maybe a little bit it went away for a while now it it's returning just in terms of sound for music would you agree with that not agree with that i certainly possibly i certainly hope so i mean it's not returning in the mainstream of course because you know rock and metal have never gotten the love or the respect that they i think deserve from mainstream uh in terms of radio play and airplay and popularity but i i do think i do agree with you that i think there are a lot of uh bands coming up and just going out and going raw and doing it and not overproducing and making it sound too perfect um i know certainly in in the case of x temper that's our philosophy is go out there and just rock and have fun um you know if mistakes show up mistakes show up it's it's that's that's organic that makes it sound like human beings made it not a machine or a robot and i certainly hope that that uh that uh trend follows and that we get a lot more you know people just coming out and producing straight up rock and roll and uh kind of going away from this pop rock nonsense that we've kind of come to know in the last 15 or 20 years yeah the autoplay or the auto tune and the or it's just it's like yeah no yeah i mean i appreciate all the technology that goes into that but at the same time anybody can uh make a make a record or make a song with very little musical talent um and i i appreciate the passion if you're interested in 
creating music that's great, but uh, there's something about having talented musicians together in a room recording stuff and, you know, just creating stuff out of thin air and then putting that on tape and getting it out there. It's just, and I think there is a lot more of that coming back. Uh, I think um, certainly people like Dave Grohl have had an influence on people like going back to recording on tape and just being more organic about it. Definitely. Now, do you guys have any plans to tour? And if so, are you going to be able to fit that in your best busy wrestling schedule? Cause I know you've got a lot coming up with that too. Right. Well, that's the thing is, you know, I, this is, this is my labor of love and my passion project away from wrestling and, Unfortunately, the bad side of that is oftentimes I have to turn down or can't do gigs because, as we know, gigs in bars and clubs happen on the weekends, which is oftentimes when I'm wrestling. Uh, we just did a gig the last weekend, and we do plan on gig gigging all spring and summer. Uh, and as far as tours, uh, it, obviously those would have to start out small in the Southern California, Northern California area or Arizona, Nevada. Because in addition to myself being busy, the other guys in my band are, we're all working class guys. We all have jobs and families and responsibilities, but love doing music. And if something were to come our way, we would certainly uh, jump on any opportunity. But yeah, that's just it. It's trying to squeeze this in uh, to my schedule. In addition to being a husband and father and a guy with, you know, a lot of other responsibilities. But you know what? It's, it's, I take the seize the day carpet diem method and try to try to get in as much as I can in a day's in a day's work, right? Exactly. You know that that cursed day job we all have to have one. You know, yeah, yours is more fun than mine. Day, yeah, Sorry. wrestling's my day job, so I can't, I can't complain. It just uh, <laughs> you know sometimes it, it conflicts with my other with my other hobby. We call music a hobby at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all empathize with that, although your day job's way cooler than mine. <laughs> I'm stuck in an office yeah. all day. <laughs> Thank you. So, speaking of wrestling and your day job, coming up, you have the Masters of the Craft on April 29th, where you're going to be teaming with your good buddy Chris Daniels and Dalton Castle to face off against Adam mm-hmm. Page and the Young Bucks. You know, there's a lot of talk that Dalton is a rising star in ROH. Do you agree with that? Oh, it's uh, undeniable. Um, the guy is incredibly popular, very, very unique. Um, he's, he's a very interesting character, which I think the business is missing uh, these days. Is, is interesting characters, and he's a guy that he has all the um, he has all the tools. He, he can he can wrestle. He's extremely entertaining. He can talk. He's got a great look. And what's not to like about him? Uh, just a great character in the professional wrestling business, and a huge addition to our roster. Uh, and uh, um, a guy. I, I'm very much looking forward to to uh, being on the same team with. I've wrestled him in singles, and I've done many tag matches against him. So it will be interesting to be on uh, his side again, and um, and you know rekindle that old that old love affair we have with the Young Bucks. I was gonna say, was it was it awkward fitting him in with you and Chris, or I mean, because you guys know each other so well, you guys just gelled? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, anybody that knows Chris and I knows that you know we at times can be a little bit on the obnoxious and ridiculous side. Uh, so Dalton really fits right into our game of what we have labeled tickle butt. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're all we're all on the same page in terms of that. So yeah, that wasn't that wasn't an issue at all. And you kind of you kind of started that game, I guess, back in March, or maybe it's always been ongoing, but you you upped it back in March when you joined, temporarily joined the Bullet Club. You pulled the wool over their eyes as it was in a ruse. And, you know, you helped your good buddy Chris win the ROH championship. You know, was that, what was that like for you to to do and be part of? Because I know when I saw it, I was like, what? They broke up? No. (laughs) Well, that's that's good. I'm glad you thought that because, I mean, a a lot of people thought that. And when that, when that turn initially happened, I had, I had some serious hate tweets sent my way and, uh, I had a lot of people congratulating me on joining the Bullet Club, and all that meant to me is that we fooled everybody. You know, is that we got we got him and in 2017 to fool a wrestling fan with social media and leaks being the way they are is a pretty uh, good accomplishment. So I was very very happy that you know all the work and months of preparation that went into this um, when executed came off without a hitch. And uh, when Las Vegas happened. And I came and revealed that I'm not a Bullet Club member, that I am, I am and always will be part of the addiction. Uh, it took a lot of people by surprise, and it was a culmination to a great night and a great match. And uh, ended up with Christopher Daniels winning the Ring of Honor world title, which is uh, you know, a career highlight for me, just being his best friend and being a guy that got to see it all unfold. Is it a goal of yours to become world champion? Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've said 
time and time again that if you're not looking to win a world title, why are you in the wrestling business? Uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to win the world title. Of course I do. Uh, you know, right now, uh, I am doing a lot more singles competition in Ring of Honor, and if I'm able to earn that right, then so be it. Uh, whomever has the belt at that point, I would love to take it from them. Uh, we'll see what Chris Daniels does in the future. I know keeping the title is harder than getting the title, so we'll see. Uh, Christopher Daniels and I would be an incredible matchup, a fun matchup, and one that hasn't happened in a long time. But he's kind of doing his own thing, and I'm doing my own thing, but we are still the addiction. And, um, and uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely, I'm definitely keeping that in my sights, but uh, I won't say that's in my... Uh, near future, but in my distant future, I'm certainly looking to capture singles gold in Ring of Honor. Awesome. That's a, I think that's a great goal to have. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I have to know, transitioning away from wrestling, because you're a big comic book guy, you're a big movie guy, the Star Wars trailer just came out for The Last mm-hmm. Jedi. What are your thoughts on it? I loved it. Uh, I think that, that sums up what a teaser trailer should be. It was just enough but left everybody kind of going, oh, I want so much more, which was, which was great. Uh, you know, getting to hear, just getting to hear Luke speak for, you know, essentially the first time in, well, in the timeline of the movies, 25, 30 years was awesome. And then what he said was such a revelation and shocked so many people. Uh, just, you know, the, the true Star Wars nerds like I am, I wear that badge of honor, uh, got giddy and, um, yeah, it's certainly, uh, you know, movies don't get me as hyped up as they once did, but Star Wars, I'm a sucker for, and I'm always just anticipating any news of what's coming out about it. And I was very, very uh, psyched to see that trailer and watch it and, and uh, you know, just rip it apart and look at every single frame by frame. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the movie, man. I think this is going to live up to what The Force Awakens created. Yeah, I, I have to say they did a really awesome job picking up where um, the original trilogy left off and moving it forward. And also the way that they did Rogue One and they moved Rogue One, just kind of wedged that like right in between the prequels and the original films. It was just like that really perfect bridge movie. Oh, yeah. I think- Rogue One was awesome. It was fantastic. And I, I'm a fan of the the the, the cartoon Rebels. Uh, as a 39-year-old man, I have no problem saying I watch that show religiously. And uh, and also something else about the teaser trailer, I like that they kind of did it, presented it the same way the Force Awakens trailer was. Like in the, in the Force Awakens um, trailer, Finn pops up, um, you know, in the sand, and in this one, it's Rey that pops up on, you know, at the Jedi Temple. I thought that was really cool, and they kind of modeled the trailer like the Force Awakens ones, which which I thought was super cool. Yeah, they did a really nice job with that, just kind of giving you that little little taste because again and again with you know kylo ren and just sort of teasing kylo ren and really all the characters because we also got that little glimpse of carrie fisher in the film too yep. which was awesome where you're like yeah. yay which is cool and that means so much more now that that, that you know that uh, carrie fisher's past it's just that character is already iconic but now it's i think it's you know 10 20 years down the line it's that, that character is really going to be looked back as just somebody that did so much for women in film and for uh you know creating uh a strong female lead because she honestly was a trailblazer when it comes to that oh yeah and not only female rate leads but writing and just everything she was an absolutely phenomenal person i think she was always so underrated and it's just now coming to light everything that she did and what she meant to just the industry as a whole. Oh yeah, like when you look at like how many how many times she was on sets of movies as a script consultant, and like you said, her writing and stuff that was just overlooked because she had this you know, hugely influential character in Princess Leia that she created. Uh, it's what a what a sad, tragic loss. I mean, you know, all life is precious, but you know, when it's somebody that has influenced so many people and so many young women to to go on and fulfill their dreams. It's really, really heartbreaking. And then watching her, you know, when she was alive in these movies is going to be kind of bittersweet, I think. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult because I remember when I went and saw Rogue One, I came out of the theater and and a friend of mine had sent me the message that she had had the heart attack. And I was like, oh, no, no, it can't be, no. (laughs) Right, yeah, that was right. And they... They did the CGI rendering of her, which was, you know, and uh, I think I'd, uh, I think I'd seen the movie. I didn't get to see the movie until after she had passed, so it was like, just kind of like, oh, just kind of tugged at you. But 
you know, the magic of cinema is that she'll be alive forever in those films. Yes. And you mentioned the CGI. I just have to know because you are a fan of the series and there's been kind of a lot of controversy with this, with Rogue One in particular, where they've kind of input people that are no, no longer with us in the films. What are your thoughts on that? Well, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of movies that rely on CGI. And I know Star Wars has always been one of those movies that kind of, you know, created the genre. They, you know, they created technology in the 1977 to, to make Star Wars. But I don't think Rogue One or Force Awakens or any of these movies that, uh, it didn't happen to Force Awakens, but Rogue One, I don't think it just relied on the CGI creations of Grand Moff Tarkin or, or uh, Princess Leia. I think, you know, the story was strong enough that it didn't distract me. Um, and it's, uh, those characters are so important that you couldn't make the movie without them. And uh, they're trying to be authentic and they're trying to stay true to the story. So instead of getting somebody that might look kind of like you know, P- Peter Cushing's or, or Carrie Fisher, they recreate them. And I don't necessarily have a problem with it. Uh, when movies rely on that as the arc of the story, that's when I kind of take issue with it. But it didn't bother me. Uh, I, I know it bothers some of the hardcore fans and you, know, you can't please everybody, but it's... Uh, and people say that there's spots where they look kind of weird and look super computer generated. I haven't dissected it enough to see that, but I kind of just take myself out and try to enjoy it for what it is. And it, it does it. It doesn't bother me because the story stories are so strong in these movies, and I'm um, I'm really focused on that and not computer imagery. Yep, I would have to agree with that. I just I know a lot of people were like rallying against it and super upset and going, you know, well, it shouldn't have been in there. Or it, you know, it's it's a bad tribute or something like that. And it's like, no, no, it's not, because they were respectful about it. And it's not like they're in yeah. there for the entire movie. Yeah, and, the, and those same people would be the ones, the first ones to fire up if, you know, if those characters were ignored in the movie. They would be the same ones to, to you know, cry foul about that. So uh, I think that's, the, you know, that's the vocal minority. And I, I don't think uh, Disney or Lucasfilm is catering to them, they're catering to telling a good story. And I think they've knocked it out of the park so far with both movies. Yeah. And let's hope they knock it out of the park with the last Jedi. I think so. I'm judging by what we've seen. I think so. I, I, I really think they're taking, obviously they're taking, uh, owning this franchise serious and putting all their heart and soul into it. Uh, and I, I'm the most hardcore star Wars fan and I'm, I've been very, very pleasantly surprised thus far. Now, are you going to go visit the Star Wars land at Disney when they open it, or are you just kind of meh about that? Oh, no, I certainly will, and I've, uh, I have I live in Southern California. I'm not far from Disney. Uh, I, I have um, I have purposely not gone there in many years. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think by the time that, that the, uh, the Star Wars land actually opens, my son will be old enough to really, really enjoy Disney and take it in, so that'll be my excuse as a grown man to go there and <laughs> completely geek out and and take it all in. So uh, I'm, I'm really kind of saving my, you know, my next Disney adventure for that. Uh, as a kid growing up, I, I loved it. And when Star, I remember when Star Tours first came, I was a very small kid. I loved it. So I, I'm certainly going to go, certainly going to go hit it up. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those times I'm going to feel like I'm a kid again. It's, it's going to be cool to, to walk around essentially, you know, that universe. That sounds like a plan to me. I'm jealous because you because it's really close to you, and it's I'm on the East Coast, so they're not going to bring it out this uh, way, if at all, for a long while. So I may have to make a trip to California to go see it. Cause yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of glad that you know, Disneyland is the original. Though Disney World is much larger, Disneyland is the original. So I'm glad they're they're doing it there. Um, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. I, I just I really can't wait to see it. It's I, I kind of wish I could, like, eight-year-old me could go back in time and, and see it because I'm sure I would just have a, a completely different appreciation for it. But as a as an adult, uh, seeing it is going to be super cool, just kind of reliving my childhood in that, you know, few hours in the park. Sounds like a plan to me. Well, Frankie, I don't want to hold you up on this beautiful day. I just want to thank you, say thank you so much for joining us today. Super appreciative. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for the conversation. I can... Uh, I could chat about music and Star Wars any day of the week, so uh, this is good. Well, anytime you want to come on, we're happy to have you. Awesome. Thank you.